I see at least a few heads down programming yeah. in the audience. That's always nice to see. Oh, hey, we're in business, or sort of. It's, it's a weird mix, but we see Paul and the video. All right, double Paul, slightly delayed. Oh man, you gotta be able to do some good like uh, uh, collaborations with yourself there. Yes, we have life-size Paul. Paul is to scale. If you're on the feed, his video version of himself, the doppelganger, is exactly the same size as real Paul now. Oh, hey, there we go. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you to our hard-working AV team. All right, Paul, take it away. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. And um, now my pitch by software is bad um, and how we can improve it. Um, yeah, today I'm excited to share Embark with you. Uh, with this project, we explored dynamic documents, which allow you to do your whole planning process within a single medium. Um, instead of reaching out to external app in Embark, you can pull all the computational tools you need directly into the document. So to ground this research in a real use case, we picked uh, travel planning because planning a trip requires you to pull together information from different sources in order to make a decision. So first, as a baseline, let's see how I might plan a trip in our app-based world today. So let's say I want to uh, go canoeing this weekend, and um, I know there is a nice lake nearby where I live called Ruhrdam. So I might start my plan by just pulling it up on Google Maps. And first, I want to know, like, how can I get there? This is still straightforward to do. And uh, now I can see it takes about one hour by car. So next, I'm curious about the weather. Like, should I go on Sunday or on Saturday? And this is a question that lies outside of the realm uh, of Google Maps. So I need to pull up uh, the weather app. And this is already where things kind of start to get tedious because like by default, the weather app sh just shows me the forecast for my hometown. The problem is it's completely oblivious to the surrounding context. It doesn't know that right next to it, I have Google Maps pulled up uh, looking at a specific destination. So I guess I have to punch in the location again. And first I try Ruhrdam, that doesn't work. So next maybe the city close by, Heimbach. And um, finally, I get the forecast, and I can see like Sunday is probably the best day uh, to go canoeing. So now I have all this information, but the problem is the views I composed here are completely ephemeral. As soon as I close these windows, like all the information is gone. And this isn't even that complicated of a plan. Um, and like maybe. This exists, this is just one decision of a bigger plan of like uh, some friends are visiting over the weekend. So like how are coping, how are people coping with these limitations today? Um, one approach is to have a central planning document that uh, people use to record their decisions and uh, collect information across multiple apps. But there are some problems with this approach. First, a document is a static medium, so um, at most you can paste in links or take screenshots, but you're losing a lot of the richness and interactivity um, that you're usually getting from apps. Also, this uh, doesn't solve the context problem. Um, the user still is still forced to manually copy back and forth data between the document and the individual apps. So we think, uh, this idea of having this central information document is really great, uh, but with Embark, we want to elevate this. We want the document to become a substrate that can host both the notes of the user together with the computational tools that they need. So how co could such a substrate look like? For this, let's first uh, look at what apps are made out of. So as an example, let's look at Google Maps. To the user, it's presented as a fixed interface, but conceptually, like, what does it consist of? Uh, so first, there are uh, locations, like Aachen and Ruhrdam. Then we have routes based on that location. And finally, we have a map that uh, shows that information together. But what are these parts? So a location is a piece of data. Um, it's something that an app can operate on. And the routes are computations. Uh, these are things that the app can perform on the data. 
And finally, the map is, an, uh, is a view that uh, can show both data and the results of computations. So with Embark, our strategy is to unbundle the app by reifying data computations and view, views um, as tangible things that a user can uh, place in their document. So we start with an um, outliner as a base material. An outline is a list of text nodes that can be uh, uh, nested. And the user can then gradually enrich their outline with uh, structured data, computations, and views. So structured data can be referenced in the outline through mentions. Uh, in, in bulk, for example, you can mention uh, locations or dates. Um, computations are then represented as formulas in the outline. And formulas allow users to reference live data, like uh, routing information. Um, and they can also do um, calculations uh, from within the outline. And finally, we have interactive views, which can be opened uh, for any node in the outline to render the data uh, it contains. So after this brief introduction, uh, let me show how we can actually use Embark. Uh, hopefully that still works. Uh, Oh no. oh no. <laughs> we have crashed again for those on the stream. Shouldn't, uh, it's back. Wait. Maybe. Well, not here. Uh, it's the same thing. I can't click anything anymore. Okay. We're going to take a brief minute here. Ah. Okay. Uh, Matt on AV, are you seeing the feed from the? Yeah, that looks the same to me as it there. Okay. Should I just unplug it and? Yes. Do you not have an it's HDMI frozen. port on that one? Ah, OK. Maybe it doesn't like it if I switch it while it's, no, come on. No, now it's frozen again. I'm so sorry about this. Oh, blame Apple. Yeah. Full screen or there's some HDMI negotiation that's probably getting swallowed somewhere in the stack. Yeah, yeah. No more full screen, Paul. Just keep things in Windows. Okay, now it's rebooting again. So. Okay, we're rebooting. For those <laughs> so on the screen, I guess you can hear them. Anybody know any good knock knock jokes? Yeah. Oh, we see it. We see your screen here. Yeah. Your computer was restarted because of a problem. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> good. Do you have to restart your daemon there? I see a local host. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh... Should do it. No, no, don't go full screen. No, Didn't no. You learn the first two times. Okay. okay. Good luck. <laughs> okay. Finally, thanks for your patience. So yeah, let's uh, now see how we can actually plan a whole weekend with Embark. So in this scenario, I have uh, some friends visiting over the weekend, and I want to plan a couple of activities for them. So they arrive on Friday, um, and I want to do some sightseeing with them. On, su on Saturday, we have uh, two things planned, an art exhibit and a flea market. And on, oh, wait. Uh, yeah, on, and on, wait, sorry, did I mess up? I didn't show you the canoeing example, wait. Uh, sorry, I messed I messed this completely up. Uh... Oh wait, no. So, sorry, I I was messed up. I'm, I just continue with the demo. Um, <laughs> so I was confused for a bit. Um, yeah, on Sunday um, is uh, the canoeing. 
Did I talk about the? Yes. Can, yeah. Sorry. I, <laughs> okay. So now let's go into it. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. So I have these notes. So let's uh, start by fleshing out this a bit, maybe. Uh, so on Friday I have uh, like three stops on my plan. So maybe I can add a fourth. Um, I know there is a chocolate factory in Aachen, um, so maybe I will add this. And I can do this by writing at uh, lint uh, chocolate factory and add it to my outline. And um, if I click on this mention, you can see like actually the chocolate factory is also just an outline um, with attributes nodes. And uh, this outline was automatically created by the system for me uh, through the autocomplete. So this is the first time that my friends are visiting Aachen, so um, it would be really helpful for them to see all these places on a map so they get a better feel uh, for the city. So um, there are a couple of ways I can do this in Embark. So first I can open a map for the whole document uh, right next to it. And now I can zoom in, I can see the individual locations, I can hover over them and then they get uh, highlighted in the outline. Um, I can also open up individual markers to see the details, and the hover also works the other way around if I uh, hover a location in the outline. Instead of opening uh, maps for the whole outline, I can also open it for individual days. So for example, I could um, open a map in line just for Friday. So now I can see uh, the, the locations for that day in isolation, uh, which is useful. So I can see actually like most of the spots are uh, like in walking distance, only the chocolate factory uh, is further out. So maybe we need to think about how to get there later. I'm going to close that for now. So besides just uh, placing maps in different, uh, for different uh, places uh, in different places of the outline. I can also customize the map itself. For example, I can um, like change markers. If I have the cathedral open, I can add an icon property and add a nice emoji. And now it's easier to see like what the individual markers are. Um, in general, you can add your own attributes, but there are certain like, cast, uh, like system attributes that the system recognizes, like the icon uh, here. Um, the map still looks a bit uh, cluttered, so um, one thing we could do is like color code the locations by day. So for that, we have a color picker, so I can uh, choose a different color uh, for each day. And now it's easier to see like which location belongs uh, to which day. The way the color picker works is that it adds a color attribute uh, to the day and then all the locations that are contained within that day are rendered uh, using that color. Okay, so now we have a pretty good um, overview of the weekend. Next, let's figure out the remaining detail for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So for Friday, first of all, it would be good to know uh, what the weather will be. So for that, we can use a weather formula in Embark. Um, usually, we don't have to write formulas ourselves. Um, Embark automatically suggests formulas. If I select a node, I can see here suggested formulas using the data at that point in the outline. So I can add the weather. And I can see, actually, uh, it won't be great, but at least it's not raining, so we should be fine. Next, let's figure out how to get to the chocolate factory. Um, here it's really useful that Embark automatically shows a preview of the result of the, of the formula. So I can actually use this suggestion list to compare different modes of transport, like going by bus versus walking. And I can see uh, like transit is much faster, so I'll pick that option. I can make this a bit bigger. So now, We've seen how you can add formulas to individual nodes, but sometimes it's also useful to, add, to apply a formula throughout the outline. For example, uh, it would be nice to know the weather for each day. For that, Embark has an automation, so I can select a formula. And I have here this repeat button. If I hover over it, I can see already a preview. And if I like it, I can click it. And now I can see uh, the weather for each day. So to do that, Embark 
infers automatically a pattern by looking at the arguments. So in this case, it would look for a node that mentions a date and has a parent node that mentions a location. And it's important to note that this automation is just a one-time action. Like the weather formulas that were inserted here, they don't have any special behavior. Um, they behave as exactly the same as if I had inserted them manually. And the benefit of um, making things concrete is that if the automation messes up, the user just has to fix an individual formula. They don't have to think about abstract patterns. Okay, so now we figured out most of the details for Friday. Next, let's look um, at Saturday. We can see there are two things, um, the art exhibit and the flea market, but we can see some problem because it's probably going to rain. So the question is like, how do we sequence things so we go to the flea market when it doesn't rain? And this is a question that Embark really excels at because you need to consider both the opening times of the flea market uh, together with the weather forecast. And usually these kind of things would be spread across multiple apps. But in Embark, it's pretty straightforward. All I have to do is open a calendar view for, the, for, the, uh, for, the, for Saturday. And now I can see uh, both the weather forecast and uh, the opening times. Uh, Actually, um, the weather forecast is also has hourly data. Like here, it's just shown as a summary. But if you open it, uh, if you uh, open a calendar view, it shows it uh, by hour. And looking at this, it's pretty obvious that we should go there uh, in the morning because it's less likely to rain. So probably I'll just like rearrange these two things. Finally, um, I want to consider one more detail uh, for Sunday. Um, actually, I um, don't own a car, so usually I use a car sharing app, and it would be nice to figure out like what it will cost approximately uh, to rent a car for the day. So I can do this by assigning uh, the result of the drive uh, formula to an attribute. For example, I can call it route. And then I can... Uh, write estimated costs, and I can get the route, the distance of the route uh, by two, and like each kilometer costs 30 cents, and there is a 25 euro charge per day, so it's around about 50 euros uh, to rent a car. I can also do uh, computations uh, in line. I can write uh, per person, it will cost estimate cost divided by four. So I can say like per person it will be around 12 euros. So now you've seen how uh, we could plan a whole weekend with an embark. We considered different things like the weather forecast, transportation. We visualized that information in different views to make decisions like maps and calendars. And all of that we could do within the document. And not only was this more convenient uh, than the app approach, but also uh, it's really nice that we now have this single artifact. I can share this as an itinerary with my friends, or I could, and it's also useful on the day to refer back to to get uh, crucial information. Okay, I'm not going to switch. <laughs> Uh, I've opened the wrong thing, so, okay. Uh. Okay, so next I want to tell you some personal stories how we in the team uh, have used Embark to plan various travel trips. So first I want to talk about my colleague Jeffrey. Um, he was planning a road trip. And in the middle of it, he wanted to uh, stop for dinner, so he was considering two alternative restaurants. And with Embark, he was able to show both routes together on a single map. And by looking at the map, he quickly decided for the first option because it split the trip more evenly, and also it was a more scenic route along the coast. And of course, Using research-grade software takes some dedication. Unfortunately, uh, Embark doesn't work on mobile. So uh, for this trip, uh, Jeffrey had to carry around his laptop the whole time. 
Next, I want to talk about uh, my colleague Alex. Um, usually he works from an RV traveling through the US. Only uh, COVID forced him to, uh, be to settle down for a while again. But during our project, he was planning another, uh, another trip um, with his RV to go uh, travel, travel full time. Um, and for him, he's not just interested in the final destination, but also the routes taken along uh, the way. So with Embark, he was able to create a personal wish list of potential routes and uh, points of interest, together with uh, notes to add additional context. And by visualizing all this information on a map, he uh, could then uh, make a flesh out his plan and consider different alternatives. Finally, I want to talk about my own travel story. Uh, this year, I participated in an adventure rally called Post of Inconvenience together with my brothers. And the goal of this uh, rally was to get a really crappy car and then visit as many uh, as po poles as possible, which were spread all over Europe and beyond. And with Embark, I could create a color-coded map um, for all the poles, and this was a really uh, useful asset uh, for the planning process. For example, one evening I was talking with my brothers on the phone and we were discussing whether we could do three poles in a single day. And to answer this question, I could just pull up my planning document and quickly do some back of the envelope calculations uh, to figure out if we could do it. So next, let's zoom out a bit and see like, what things did we learn through building Embark. First, it might be interesting that in, when we started this project, we didn't even think about documents. Um, initially, we explored how you can compose various widgets by placing them on a 2D canvas. For example, here you could uh, place a map next to a weather widget and have them share daily with each other. But we quickly realized that this environment uh, lacked a way to record your decisions. In contrast, once we started to host all the tools in the documents, we were suddenly able to capture uh, the whole thought, our whole thought process. And documents are really great for this kind of thing because you can uh, see or you can record how a decision evolves over time, like what were the alternatives that were considered and why did you pick a certain option in the end. And this is information that's really important when you're looking back um, at your plan. Another thing we found is the outline is, strikes a really nice balance between uh, structure and freeform. There are many things that you can express through an outline, like a sequence of things or alternatives, or you can group things. And expressing your thoughts like this feels very fluid. Um, of course, there is some drawback because to the computer, the exact meaning of the outline is kind of ambiguous. The only uh, universal semantic we have is the parent-child uh, parent relationship between the nodes. Um, for some cases, we found that that's fine. For example, but, um, if you want to visualize a node on a map, we just like pull in all the locations that are contained in that node. Um, for other cases, it's a bit more tricky. For example, if you want to suggest formulas, it's important to understand the nuanced relationship between the nodes. So this is something we weren't fully able to solve in Embark. Uh, that's still a bit of an open question. And we also find that reifying computations enables uh, composi composition um, because in Embark, uh, Formulas are tangible things. Uh, there are many problems that uh, users can solve by just like composing multiple formulas and visualizing uh, the result in a view. Um, for example, like users can create a list of routes um, and visualize them together on a map. They can use um, the result of a, com uh, of a formula to do some further calculations. You can also compare different modes of transportation or even uh, Com like show multiple or different formulas in the same context, like here you can see a route together with parking spots uh, near the destination. And it's important to point out that the last two uh, examples are things that you can also do in Google Maps. But the difference is in Embark, uh, this is just a compos composition that the user can do themselves. Whereas in Google Maps, like each of them, each 
composition type is a new feature that like a developer needs to build. So this is all I have uh, for now. Uh, thanks for your attention and patience with uh, technical difficulties. Um, we also have an upcoming essay um, about uh, this project where we talk more about um, like how this is actually implemented. Um, so if you're interested, uh, you can also already sign up uh, on our website. And also I want to thank Todd for the beautiful uh, photos in the presentation. Um, yeah, if there's time for questions, um, yeah, feel free. We have, thank you. You can take all the questions you want during our coffee break. Yeah, so if you'd like to hear more about Embark, get out of here and get a coffee and ask about it. Um, thank you, Paul. That was great. Uh, folks on the live stream, we're taking our coffee break now, the last coffee break of the day. And we will be back here in about 30 minutes at what is locally 4 o'clock. <laughs>